On January 5, 1972, NASA announced a space shuttle program following approval from the Nixon administration. After years of uncertainty about the future direction of the agency, NASA now had a new promising and versatile vehicle to reach space, and it would be reusable. Capsules have been used by necessity to match the Soviet Union in the space race and to meet President John F. Kennedy's deadline to reach the moon by the end of the 1960s, but that was because they were quicker to develop. Capsules like the Apollo Command Module were not, however, designed to be reused. So all the expensive electronics and life support systems went to waste after just one use. A massive blow since they cost as much or more than the launch system. Even worse, their service modules burned up on re-entry without even the vaguest possibility of retrieving them for reuse. That was not how Von Braun, Korolev, or any of the early space designers had originally envisioned travel to space and back. They had favored space planes from the start and had been forced into capsules by expediency. At the same time, throughout the 1950s and 1960s, both space programs had people working on space planes in parallel to capsules in the hope of someday creating a reusable spacecraft. Hindsight makes too evident the flaws in the plan, but those flaws have often been exaggerated, and at the time the concept had great merit. While there were deficiencies in the shuttle stack, the external tank and the choice of solid boosters instead of liquid engine boosters, the orbiter itself was not a mistake, and the culmination of decades of engineering effort. It was the first spacecraft designed to be reused and will inform all other attempts at reuse. It was successful on its very first launch. The turnaround time for the shuttle Columbia between its first and second launch was 212 days, and the quickest turnaround for a shuttle was Atlantis between STS-51J and STS-61B, which was 54 days. For such complex vehicles, that is still a remarkable achievement. The orbiters were meant to be flown on 100 missions each. The orbiter that flew the most was Discovery, which had 39 flights and accumulated 364 days, 22 hours and 39 minutes in space, a few hours shy of a year. A major blow to the economic viability of the program was the end of commercial contracts being flown on the shuttle after the Challenger disaster, diminishing a source of revenue and one of the great perks of flying a payload on the shuttle, sending one of your own company's people on the mission with the payload. After Challenger, the shuttle was not allowed to compete in the commercial market, and efforts to improve turnaround understandably took a back seat in favor of safety. Despite its problems, no vehicle type has launched more astronauts to space than the space shuttle, and it did ultimately accomplish its original intended mission to facilitate the construction of a large orbital station. Without it, the Hubble Space Telescope would have been left with flawed optics, unable to deliver the incredible images that have given us a new understanding of the stars and the universe. The shuttle was an incredible engineering feat, inspiring in its grace, and the orbiters remain monuments to dreams given form. Thank you for watching Today in Space History for January 5th.